That's a championship team right away. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into First Take. Happy Halloween. We got a treat for you. Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman, and this special to get. Let me get all these accolades in here. Excuse me, sir. Rookie of the Year, two-time Olympic gold medalist, ten-time All-Star, two-time champion, two-time Finals MVP, 2014 NBA MVP, Kevin Durant here with us. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate that. Thank you. Before we get the party started, you are one of the executive producers of the ESPN Plus original series, The Boardroom. It's bringing fans inside the business of sports, featuring real-time conversations with athletes and executives about what's really changing the game. And a special edition, our very own Stephen A. stopped by to talk a little free agency. The one time I got mad at him this year was when he got mad at media members for focusing on free agency. Y'all come here every day. Ask me about free agency, ask my teammates, my coaches. Uh, let us play basketball. Hello, you're Kevin freaking Durant. It matters where you're going. And that is available now. It's streaming on ESPN Plus. Download it. He was brave enough, KD, to invite Stephen A in. So I'm sure it's going to be a good time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They got to check it out. They got to check it out. Uh, I'm sorry. It's good morning. Good seeing you. Good morning. Good seeing you. Good, good seeing you. Good morning. And thank you for coming in, Kevin. No doubt. Can I turn my attention to this of man? Of course. Right here? First of all, good to see you, bro. How you doing? See you too, man. All right. Um, before I get into everything with you, and 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 we had our conversation on the boardroom, and, and and go check it out on ESPN Plus. You don't want to miss it. Let me get some of the news out of the way first. I got to get this as gratuitous. The Washington Nationals won the World Series last night. Why you say it like that? Yeah, because I'm a New York native. I'm not a D.C. native, Kevin Durant. That's why I said it like that. I'm not happy about it, but how do you feel? I'm, I'm ecstatic. I mean, a chip back in D.C. I mean, we got the Caps, the Mystics, and now in the Nats. Feels good. I'm glad he First said First time that. in franchise I'm, history. I'm glad he answered that quickly. Let's move on from the champions <laughs> in D.C. being a better town than New York City right now. Let's, just, let's move on from that. Let me get to the news of the item. One other news. Steph Curry, your former teammate goes down last night, broken hand. You saw that, your thoughts, what went through your mind? I mean, luckily it wasn't anything more serious, th serious than that, you know, especially seeing Clay out for the whole season and myself, you know, out for the whole year. So I'm sure he'll be back playing again, but it was tough to, you know, to, to see him, you know, just break his hand on TV. I mean, he's been doing so much and, you know, the team is still transitioning and it's a new group and a young group, so he's trying to do so much. and. Having him out is going to be tough for them to sustain. So hopefully he gets back and gets healthy. Now that I got that out the way, let's get into you. Let me get right to it. When the hell are you coming back? Is it possible that you're going to come back this year? Not right now. Mm. I'm not thinking about it, just rehabbing every day. I'm still, it's a slow process, so I'm grinding. Are you holding out hope that at some point in time in this season, assuming, assuming the Brooklyn Nets have a successful season and they're going to get to the playoffs again, mm -hmm. Have you completely ruled out the possibility that you can return? Yes. You're done. We won't see you at all this year in a Brooklyn no. Nets uniform. No, I'm playing on it. Go ahead, Max. So we had a conversation on this show yesterday about Kyrie Irving and the disconnect between the way his teammates seem to like him and the media reports on his, the latest is, mood swings. You two are playing, going to play together in Brooklyn. Reportedly, that's based partly not only on how the level you guys are playing, but your relationship. Can you speak to Kyrie Irving's personality and why it may be interpreted differently by the media and by his teammates? KD, before you answer that, Kyrie spoke last night after the game about this report. I want you to hear that sound, too. So let's play that for KD. You can continue to ask other people around me about what they think about me and continue to write about mood swings like... You know, human beings have mood swings. <laughs> like you go home and you're, you're not happy with things or you're mad at something or you're happy. That's a mood swing. <laughs> it's okay to be human. Like, I don't have to be perfect for anyone here, nor do I have to be perfect for the public. So I'm not here to dispel any perception. I'm just here to be myself. I mean, he just spoke for himself, so I don't really have to say much. But as his teammate, I mean, there's no problems at all. Absolutely none. He comes into work every day, works hard, great teammate. Talks to everybody, just he's having a great time. But I mean, obviously, people had a great thing, and Kyrie's a great, great player, out of this world player. So 
a lot of situations that we can't control, but he's going to keep working every but do day. But you, do you, like, yes, he's a great player, and people, some, we like to build people up and tear them down, see if they get up again. But do you think, I think, do you think that Kyrie is especially a magnet for that stuff? And if so, why? Why mm. does it seem he gets it out of proportion? Because you guys don't like him. It's simple. Because he presents no problems, absolutely none. Hold on, who are you guys? Media? You say you guys. You guys don't like Kyrie Irving. Whoever, whoever says he's a problem in the locker room. Mm. People look at Kyrie, and I totally agree with you from the standpoint, he's a great guy. I've talked to Kyrie on several occasions. Damn smart dude. And he's just a different kind of cat. You know, he doesn't bother anybody. It's ridiculous to me, these stories that have been written about him. It actually ticks me off, but I'll get into that later. When they talk about you, and they talked about Kyrie and the collaboration, you two coming together in Brooklyn, New York. One of the biggest things they talk about, matter of fact, I think it's the only thing they brought up, is the personalities that you two have. Because obviously you've been outspoken in addressing who you perceive to be your critics. He clearly, you have, he clearly has his own critics as well. And people have wondered what, how you guys are going to survive and prosper in New York City playing for the Brooklyn Nets. How do you respond to that? I don't. I mean... Our work shows. We come to work every day, and we we've been building up who we are as basketball players since day one, and that's all that's been our focus since day one. I'm talking about as kids. So, how we approach it, how we look, or what we may do during games, or how we speak to the media, it really doesn't matter because we come to work every day as as professionals. Do Do you feel like there is a negative lab, label that is attached to you guys, like people have said to you, have said about you? You're a bit too sensitive. You and I have spoken about that. Yeah. Uh, but for the national television audience, for people that look at Kevin Durant and say, damn it, he's a bit too sensitive. He has to respond and clap back at anybody that gets, in, that gets at him. What do you say to that? I mean, we're all sensitive about something. I mean, we're just humans. I mean, I'm not any different from anybody else. If I, see, if I hear you saying something that I feel is not true, I'm going to talk to you about it. That's just how it is, us in person or over, in, over Instagram. So, I mean, that's just who I am. I mean, I'm not going to change who I am because people tell me I should act different. I love basketball. I'm approach it the same way I always did. And yet human beings change over time. People mature. Yeah. We saw you enter the league as a kid. From the way it seems to me, you were much less comfortable in your own skin in front of the media, let's say, as a 19-year-old than you are as in your mid-20s, in your late 20s. Do you think you've changed in that way? And if so, how? No, I've always been the same person. It's just a matter of me expressing myself, figuring out different ways to express myself. Um, always had these thoughts in my head, but just getting them out has been different. It's been an evolution. I feel like everybody is on that, on that road. What, what was it about the thoughts in your head that you didn't want to get out? It or? wasn't that I, I didn't want to get out. It was just a... a trying to figure out how to say it, you know? I always wanted to be authentic and true to everything that I've seen. I wanted to give fans a different, different perspective from a player, an uh, authentic and true perspective. And sometimes that may not come out the way you like it. Kevin, when you came out, I felt like you bossed up and you said, you know who I am, I'm Kevin Durant. We heard that quote a ton. What did you mean by that? I think people wanted me to get out of character on a basketball court and change my game, and uh, I'll never do that. Well, I'm one of those people. And let me tell you why. I consider you to be the best in the world right now. I don't care about Kawhi and LeBron. I think you are the best in the world right now. So to me, when somebody is great of a defensive player, as for example, a Patrick Beverly was or whatever the case may be, I believe that somebody like that, somebody like you is supposed to dominate that kind of matchup. You explained it. And you explained it very accurately, I might add. But I guess what I'm asking is, when people look at Kevin Durant, there are times where the reason why he isn't considered the best by some others is because that lack of assertiveness, that lack of aggressiveness, the dog in him that says, to hell with this, give me the ball, let me remind you of who I am. What do you say to that? I mean, I led my team in shots ever since I've been in the league. So, always been number one on the team in shots. It's like, but playing with Russell Westbrook, a lot of people say that I should put him in his place. Like, He's a player that you can't put in his place. He's a, a, a big personality. He's a, he's a, a player that you can't, you can't tame. So, like, 
I was just going to support him no matter what. I think that's what a lot of people try to say is that I wasn't assertive in putting Russell in his place. But my whole thing was to let these guys grow and be creative in their own space. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's what teammates do. So, I mean, I always led the team in shots. I always took the late game shots. I always was trusted to make all the plays. And I played average 39 minutes a game almost my whole career. So it that shows you my GMs, the coaches, trust me to be that guy every single day, every every game since I've been in the league. Speaking of letting people be themselves, Draymond Green is another big personality and what have you. A lot was made about the altercation against the Clippers when y'all were playing, and e- folks even alluded to that playing somewhat of a role in you electing to walk away from Golden State and go to Brooklyn. Speak to that at all, the relationship you have with Draymond Green. Speak to whether or not that had any impact whatsoever in your decision to leave Golden State. Yeah, I wish that wouldn't have happened. I feel like uh, that was a situation that definitely could have been avoided. It really came out of nowhere. And for us, you know, everybody was just looking for something to tear us down with, you know, and I think they used that. And that just brought in the, the firestorm from you know, free agency to every day it was about my free agency. Every day it was about my disposition as a player, what I look like on the bench, what I look like, you know, during the game. So it opened it up. It opened up a lot of nonsense. You know, I think that could have been avoided. And me and Draymond talked about it. But what I will say is this. I don't know if nonsense is the word that you can use if you listen to what Draymond said a couple of weeks ago on Adrian Wojnarowski's podcast where he talked about how Steve Kerr, Bob Myers came to came to him saying that he needed to apologize to you for how he came at you. He said he refused at that particular moment in time because that's just not how he felt until he looked into your eyes and saw that his brother was hurt by what he said. Were you hurt? How exactly was it that you felt at that time when everything went down? When I say nonsense,